everyone and welcome. My name is Alex Hazer and I work for Molex, but I am here today representing the SCSI Trade Association. And I'm here to talk about how to connect a SaaS system. Um, this talk is basically an overview of Stay's SaaS integrators guide. So we'll go through what kind of cabling options you have for connecting a SaaS system. So first off, just an introduction. Um, this guide provides a quick reference to the menu of standard components required to assemble a SaaS system. So this is gonna include connections from a SaaS drive, such as a hard drive or an SSD, out to the enclosure level and the box-to-box -box cabling. All the standard cables shown in this presentation, as well as in the integrator's guide itself, assume that system boards, adapter cards, and everything else are pinned out according to the SAS 4.1 standard. A couple disclaimers. Um, the information in this guide, like I said, is specific to SAS 4.1. At the time of publication, the integrator's guide, of, at the time of publication of the integrator's guide, the SAS 4.1 standard has not yet been finalized but we don't expect any technical changes before its release. Uh, for more detailed information on the connectors, cable assemblies, or anything else, please refer to SAS 4.1. And there are multiple applications that use the cable assemblies discussed here. So for compatibility of sideband information, please reference SFF 8448. And for additional information, especially with regards to SAS and PCIe specific cables, please refer to SFF 9402. So first, before we dive in, I wanna to touch on obsolete cables and connectors. With the introduction of SAS 4.1, some of the connectors and cable assemblies were removed due to lack of support for high-speed signals. So that's in comparison to the original SAS 4 release. Uh, the un unsupported connectors and cables include the SAS high-density drive, SAS 4i, and then the mini SAS both 4i and 4x. So first off, looking at SAS connectors, this includes internal and external connectors. So the SAS standard will give you all of the information you need to actually implement and how sideband signaling is used um, and details like that. But for all of the mechanical definitions for these connectors, you'll have to refer to the relevant SFF specifications. So this table here highlights the different connector or SFF standards that are relevant to those different connectors. And there's some additional information in section 5.4.3 of the SAS 4.1 standard. All right, so moving into cable assemblies, um, we've got these split up in a couple different groups. So we have our internal drive, internal symmetric, internal fan out, and then external, which includes symmetric and fan out. So starting with the internal drive cables, uh, basic requirements, we'll just kind of go through a list of what each of these cables has. So the signal connections are vendor specific for power, ready LED, and power disable. The SAS initiator device uses a SATA host plug connector for the connection to a SAS drive cable assembly. And the signal assignment for the SAS initiator or expander device with this connector is the same for that as defined by a SATA host. Um, for sideband requirements, we don't have any here. Um, they are not used for drive cables. So here we've got a couple different examples of the different uh, internal drive cable assemblies that can be used. So first up all the way on the left here, we have our single port drive to a SATA signal, and you can see the power connector here. We also have a dual port drive with to two SATA, and again, it's just the one power connector. And then finally on the right, we have a multi-link, so a 4X uh, connecting to four SATA signal connectors. So this would be how you would connect any of your drives in your SAS system. Next up, we have our internal symmetric cable assemblies. So first up question is, what is a symmetric cable? So we define that as just have well, a cable that has one connector at either end. So no breakout or Y cables, um, just a single connector on each end. So basic requirements for these kind of cables, uh, TX connects to the RX on the other end. So for example, uh, TX plus on one side would connect to RX plus on the other side. Uh, cables should be labeled to indicate how many physical links are included. So that could be a one, two, three, or four X on each connector's housing. And one or more of the signal returns or round signals may be connected together or commoned in the cable assemblies. 
Um, for the sideband requirements, uh, this gets a little bit more detailed, so please refer to the integrator's guide for details on that. So for our internal symmetric cable assembly types, we have a lot of different options here. Um, well, we've chosen to highlight a couple. So on the top, we have a slim SAS 4i, so it's this connector here, to a mini SAS HD 4i. So that's just one option from this list. And then if we go to the bigger link size, we have a mini link 8i to a mini SAS HD 8i. And you'll notice that even though that there's two separate paddle card interfaces on the mini SAS HD side, they are contained within one housing on the connector, which is why that it, this is listed under the symmetric cables. Next up, we have our internal fan out cables. So unlike the symmetric cables, these have one connector at one end and then multiple connectors on the other end. So sometimes you'll hear these referred to as Y cables or breakout cables. Uh, basic requirements are fairly similar. So TX on one end connects to RX on the other end. Each signal return on one end of the cable assembly is connected to at least one signal return on the other end. And one or more of the signal returns or ground signals may be common together in the cable assemblies. And again, for the sideband requirements, please refer to the integrator's guide for details. Examples of our internal fan out cable assemblies. Um, again, lots of options to choose from. Um, we've highlighted a couple here again. So we've got our slim SAS 4i breaking out to four SAS drive connectors. And you'll notice that each of those drives has an associated power connector with it. Those are shown in white. And another example would be our mini SAS or our mini link 8i to two mini SAS HD. So you'll notice this is fairly similar to the example we showed for the symmetric cable. However, now the housings are independent and so you could plug these in to different locations and therefore it qualifies as a fan out cable. All right, so moving right along to our external cable assemblies. Basic requirements here are a little bit different. So they do not include power, ready LED or power disable signals. The connector always supports four or eight physical links, but the cable may support between one and eight. So basically that means the connector comes in uh, these blocks of either four or eight links, but you can populate any number between one and eight uh, within, within that housing. So the cable assembly should be labeled to indicate how many links are included. So this could be one, two, three, et cetera. Uh, signals, TX signals on one end connect to RX signals on the other end. And then the signal returns are not connected to the chassis ground in the cable assembly. As far as sideband requirements, uh, external cables don't have any. All communication is done between devices is done in band. So external cable assembly types, not as many to choose from here. Um, basically different variations of mini SAS HD and QSFP. So first off on the left, we've shown a mini SAS HD 8X. So again, that's um, within one housing and that's breaking out to two mini SAS HD 4X connectors. And so those are the ones in the independent housings um, separating it out. And then on the right, we have just a QSFP to QSFP connector. So a little bit more info, um, we wanted to talk about PlugFest and some additional information relevant to uh, integrating SAS systems. So for those that aren't familiar, um, occasionally we will do PlugFest. So a PlugFest is a uh, when multiple SaaS component vendors gather together at a third party test site. And so we actually do testing in person with uh, components from multiple different vendors. And we do this to demonstrate interoperability and configurability of the SaaS and SCSI architecture. And basically it's a way for us to kind of problem solve and work out any bugs that we might encounter um, before the specification is published. So for more information about upcoming stay sponsored plug fest, you can visit our website. Uh, we've added the link there. So you can look out for those, especially as the SAS standard is getting closer to release. Um, we'll usually do a plug fest once all the technical details are complete, just to kind of give everything uh, a final check and make sure that everything is working as intended before the, the standard is published. 
So other ways to stay in touch, you can visit our website to learn more about STAY. You can stay up to date on the latest SAS developments via our email newsletter. You can also find us on our various social media channels. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please feel free to email us at info at scuzzyta.org. So here's our list of references. Um, mainly it's the SAS 4.1 standard, which is available through Insights. And then a whole list of SFF documents that were listed. Um, those are available on SNIA's website. Um, those are free and publicly available. So you can find any of the SFF standards at that link below. And that takes us to the end. So hopefully this was a helpful guide uh, to understand how SAS systems can be connected. And if you'd like more detail, please refer to the SAS integrators guide. And please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you.